is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I screwed up. Hey, coming to you from New York. It's the Ramble, and I've got a sore throat. Boy, you really, that's Lori Thompson, folks. And Hello. She, and she likes to rub it in that she's in sunny Florida with the flowers and everything <laughs> like that. That's why I thought, you know, for, for believability's sake, that I should present you on our Florida deck. But the weather was calling for huge, like a, it calls for rain, like 15 minutes a day. But you never know when that 15 minutes is going to hit. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed it's going to rain. Because oh, that would be stop. that would be like a, a, an exclusive on our program. Yeah, it would be cinema verite too, because I could just like you know run to the other spot, run and, with your iPad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it'd be like a Buster Keaton. You may movie. notice I put my sunny background on me because it, I, I last time one one of the uh, interviews we did, I had the nighttime <clears throat> background here. Excuse me, my throat's a little gargly today. Uh, and I, uh, it didn't look right. Because, yeah, it would look we, like we were, and that could have happened if it was like seven o'clock here and eight o'clock here, because Florida is in Central Time. And is, so, wait a minute, Florida's in Central Time? It is. Yeah, because uh, isn't that amazing? Wait a minute. Wait well, a minute. I mean, it's it's an hour after Eastern Time. I mean, we're an hour earlier but than I mean, Eastern. It, time. It, it, by, if I look at the map, it shouldn't be central, should it? Well, I, it's a fudge. It's a little bit of a fudge. And so if you drew, like Illinois, I grew up in central time. So if you draw a line, it's a fudge. But it could be central time. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. You know, and I lived in Florida. You remember I lived in Florida. Oh. I know those treacherous years. Oh, <laughs> that, God. That fateful eon. I felt like I wasn't exactly working in Florida. I was banished to Florida. Yeah. It was like a prison island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like banished. And uh, I, I just, I mean, um, I don't remember it being central time. Yeah. Well, and plus, you know, then they do this. Some, some states, like in growing up, Mm -hmm. uh, they would, they some would go to the, uh, you know, Spring Forward would fall back. Others would not subscribe to it. And so then you got really confused in the fall. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I, I use Central Time as my basis because I'm used to doing the math because everything starts before Central Time or after Central Time. Are those, you know, birds? Or, are those birds I'm hearing? Those are birds. <clears throat> I mean, we got all kinds of them. I mean, there are a lot of bird fanciers here, yeah. And uh, I, I am not. I mean, I, I hear a morning dove, and I think it's an owl. Yeah. So because they, they, they coo the same. Right. 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 <clears throat> what is up with you, Mister? I don't know. I'm my voice is gargly today. Yeah. See, now, do you have acid reflux? Pro, reflux problem? No. No. I never did until I had to correct that sodium low. And now I drink Gatorade constantly. That causes Jesus. that causes acid reflux. Well, when it's when you drink, you know, four gallons a day. No, it's an exaggeration, but I drink a lot. What, what was wrong with your sodium? It was too low. I mean, and according to the numericals, if you get below uh, twenty-two, which I was at, mm -hmm. then you have to go in the hospital and they pump you through with fluids. And uh, it's, you know, you're on IV, and then it brings you back, and then you have to maintain it. And so V8 juice, original, mm -hmm. and Gatorade G2 with no, low sugar. And, and that, will, that will take care of all your sodium. It will. you got to be really diligent about it. And it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a chore, but we just, I drink it, I, you just, it becomes part of your day. Yeah. Well, to yeah. keep my health good in New York, they recommend, the doctors recommend 
uh, four rat sightings a day. So, rat sightings? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, you, you can meet that, like, uh, pronto, I right? just go outside, and I just stand on the corner, and I get four rat sightings, and I'm feeling much better. Yes, no, I see, you got a, you got a number on me because I only have only seen two rats a lot in my life. Really? And do I I grew up in the Midwest. We see mice everywhere when they harvest the corn. Actually, they're not as bad here as you would think they are. You know, we get their reports and so. Do you know? I was talking to Bubbles the other day. Yeah. And he Larry was Bubbles Brown. He, he was talking about San Francisco, and so I went. And I watched a documentary that CNN had on San uh -huh. Francisco. Yeah. We don't want to go back there. Oh man, it's brutal. I've been back there recently in the last year and a half, two years. And I used to go back for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. We'd go back yeah. to Sonoma yeah. and then go into San Francisco. And it's become the homelessness problem and all the ensuing problems. Like there's public defecation. You, you pretty much will see it if, yeah. you're walking, if you're walking to San Francisco. And I, my I, empathy just takes a beating in San Francisco. Because my mom's huh? Dave Chappelle said he went to a a restaurant in the Tenderloin. There may be a good restaurant down there. I have no idea, but he went to a restaurant in the Tenderloin, and he's, he's sitting there. He has a table by the window. There's some guy taking a dump right on the sidewalk. Yeah, which I mean, I have seen people shoot up in Dolores Park, um, and the other one that's you know on the slope of the Hate as it joins uh, yeah. the Visadero. Um, but I had never seen in the entire time I lived there someone defecate in public. And now you're pretty much a guarantee if you're there three well, days they, more. They say the big problem in San Francisco right now is that uh, the price of, um, of uh, um, what, what's that uh, drug, uh, the, the dangerous one, fentanyl. Uh -huh. uh, the, the price of fentanyl is the cheapest anywhere in the country. So that's why they <laughs> gravitate to, New, to San Francisco. That and the other reason is Twitter, but that's uh, another story <laughs> altogether. No, what those, that, what those, what those, uh, all Silicon Valley is no longer Silicon Valley. San Francisco is Silicon Valley. Exactly. Google yeah, is they, there. Twitter is there. Uh, uh, Yahoo, I think, is there. And so all these people moved up, and of course, what are they going to do to the rents? All the landlords are going to raise the rents. And supposedly I'm, the average rent for a one bedroom apartment in New York City is $3,000 now. Mm -hmm. What did, well, yeah. at the apartment, the very apartment I first rented, it was a one bedroom. It had a, you know, a, a, it wasn't a baker's kitchen, but it was a nice kitchen and a bedroom, bathroom, and a parking spot. Oh, yeah. And that, yeah, yeah it was 600 bucks. It was in what they used to call, uh, you know, the, Western edition, which mm -hmm. was very dicey. Yeah, kind of. It was getting better. Yeah, but uh, now that would that same apartment would cost you thirty two hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah, and, and I had. And a, a, remember, I had an apartment, two apartments in the marina. Yeah, and that was pricey even then. I had two because I used one as a studio, uh -huh. and I used the other one uh, as a. Um, um, uh, as a, as a living space, okay, yeah, and they were right across from each other, and you had to just yeah. go across on a. You remember on that kind of fire escapey thing to get yeah. from one to the other. Uh, it was a great setup. Yeah, I just kept the doors open and the kitchens on both of them. I just keep walking back and forth, you know. And uh -huh. um, one apartment cost me was it eighteen hundred dollars a month? I think something like that. And the other one was uh, about 2500. Well, yeah, oh, now that apartment is probably going for five, six thousand dollars. Totally. And you know, it's become absurd. And I once read a piece on the Pacific Rim yeah. and Silicon Valley, and it explained everything that's happening in San Francisco. Yeah. And uh, you got all this investment coming from not just one source, yeah. you know, Silicon Valley, but mm -hmm. it, it makes sense. And it's when I feel in San Francisco is it's priced itself into absurdity where to live here, you would almost have to justify it. Yeah. And, oh, you know, that that uh, rail, that speed rail that they've always been I guess speed rail, something else. But the speed rail they've been promising us 
from LA to San Francisco for years, years, years. And it's all, it's running out of money now. That's the big, yeah, so well, I don't well, know. Well, you know, um, uh, Elon Musk is trying to build this fast underground railroad. It was just like, yeah. it's like a vacuum tube and it just, yeah. <laughs> All the way to San Francisco, but he hasn't gotten that going very far. You know? Yeah, man, it would be so great. I mean, it would totally change um, the real estate, the ev everything, social habits on the West Coast. It yeah. would completely revolutionize if they would get that done. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, which I that's wish. A, yeah. That, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, but you know, I mean, okay. it, it, what? We were speaking of drugs a minute ago. You know what's really in short supply is ADHD. That's for ADHD, yeah, for... Right. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> those are people that are assimilated enough to be in your workplace. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. ADHD, basically, doesn't that affect children more than it affects adults? Generally, but they found it in, in adults with increasing frequency. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And maybe it has to do with being administered Adderall as a child. So what you're basically <laughs> saying is you can't lay your hands on crazy pills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I don't know why. I mean, they put such a tight hold on Xanax. I mean, I have a prescription that I rarely take, yeah. um, but they it doesn't. I never. You, you want you want a nation that's not troubled, don't you? Yeah, well, I got a three year supply of Xanax here in the house, yeah. and the reason is <laughs> yeah. every year my doctor gives me another prescription for ninety more pills or something. And uh -huh. I don't take a whole pill because it's the double, triple pill or something. So I oh, break it's the out. bar, yeah, yeah. the Xanax bar. So you know, I cut it in a quarter. I, you know, I don't take the whole thing if I take it at all. But I haven't taken it in a, the longest time. Yeah, same here. You know, so yeah, yeah. That here we are. Here we are. here we are. Two old people in their uh, in their declining years, uh, t talking so about the medicine they're taking. Yeah, I always try to couch it in uh, more global terms or more of the general public because I vowed when I was like 40 that I would not be one of those people that talks about their health because, uh, you well, know, somebody, about, somebody once described it to us is that when a bunch of old people sit down to lunch, the first thing they have is an organ recital. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you still have yours? You haven't replaced yours? Y yeah. yeah. Oh, did you it's replace sweet. your knee last year? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, how's your how's your pancreas doing? You know. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. pancreas is a troublemaker. Yeah. Those aisles of Langer hands. But you know what's <laughs> even better? <laughs> we have, uh, I have my neighbor, Sheila. Yeah. This woman, she doesn't gossip. She doesn't say crummy things about people. She just, but five minutes with Sheila and you are totally dialed into the neighborhood. It's great. Who's had a baby? Who's uh, going up to see their daughter? Who's uh, in the military? I mean, who just got transferred well, from the military? Yeah. It's great. Let's once yeah. again tell people that you are in Florida. Right, yeah. in the panhandle, the yeah. pandle. Oh, you're up, you're up way up there. Right, which we haven't been troubled by hurricanes. Well, what what and town are you in? What are the, what's the area up there? What's the closest? It's, it's big... the Fort Walton Beach area, but I just didn't want to live in a town that was so closely associated associated with military mm -hmm. fort. You know, fort is pretty clear, and so we live in a little boutique town. So did you uh, did you move did you move there with your husband, or did we, were, were we you did th move there? We weren't married at the time, so oh. but we did move there. Oh, okay. And, and he had friends here, and we came down for a visit, and they pretty much sold them. One was a lifetimer. I mean, there are streets named after her family here. Yeah. And she told us the good, the bad, and the ugly of the place, and the good far outweighed. I mean, she could be on the, you know, the Florida Tourism Commission, or Florida Real Estate. You don't want to be at the other end. You don't want to go to Miami or anywhere mm -hmm. near Miami. No, because my husband lived there, and so I go down, I've been there a few times. And uh, it's just like, oh, this is cool. This is nice. And he said that even people that don't think they have a problem with um, two languages being mm -hmm. prevalent mm -hmm. do after a while in Miami. And I think I said, that's racist. And he said, well, you know, I, I don't think of myself as a racist, but it gets annoying when you can't be understood speaking English. And so. Well, there's, a, there's a lot of Cuban down there. 
I know. That's what he's, he said. And he had Cuban friends. By the way, do you, do you ever try Cuban coffee? No, is it great? It keeps no. you awake for five days. I mean, this stuff really? comes in a little, little cup, right? I'm and you go, well, get... how much coffee am I going to get in this? And they say, would you like some sugar? And I'd say, well, a little bit. And they put in a whole <laughs> giant spoonful. And then they, you, you just take the thing. You down the whole thing. I, I'd do it on the way to work. I'd stop. There was this place. I'd stop and get it. And, man, it was just like that much, you know, just a little tiny bit. And you were wired for the rest of the day. That's see now they're talking my language because I'd like I'd like some of that for emergencies. Well, I can't. Like, coffee doesn't doesn't wake me up anymore. Really? No, I'm, yeah. I sit here drinking it all the time. And I used to. I switched to drinking decaf, and because uh, I was having trouble sleeping. See what old people talk about? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Decaf. So yeah. let, mm -hmm. Let's snap out of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now we are snapping we're officially snapping yeah 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 what well, i subscribed to the new york times mm. and uh for the first time oh well, we got it free you know uh, when we worked but uh it's i really like it i mean because it covers things that i mean let's face it local papers even the next and the next door app which mm. is like a religion in florida yeah. you know that next door um, but the New York Times, I'm liking quite a bit. I may just now you, that you, you're not working anymore, right? No, and it's very nice. Really? But yeah, with, um, but you're I mean, you're working. Well, this is the, this is my little thing, you know, that I do, right? Yeah, it's but fun. this I isn't this to. isn't like working. No, it, it isn't like working. I don't know well, if I told you this the last time, but a couple of weeks ago, I was asked to guest host the show here in New York. Yeah. And, and I went into this radio studio and I hadn't been in a studio for a real studio for almost 10 years. Uh-huh. And it so rejuvenated me. Yeah. Oh, it, even though it. this was a Christian conservative station, ah. I um, uh, it rejuvenated me. And I walked yeah. out of it. Marjorie said, you're walking straighter and you're just so peppy and everything. You know, it is. It's, so that's something that's in my blood. Sitting here in my apartment doing this, eh, it's not so much, you know? Yeah, it is a whole different thing. Yeah. And I love, I love the smell of radio stations. It's that combination of like tech and a little oil, grease the wheels. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. No, I know I, what you're talking it, about. You know? Yeah, intoxicating. Uh, and and it, it, so it, it really invigorated me a great deal. Yeah, if you read, I you know read biographies copiously, and the, uh, the many many radio or media biographies talk about that smell, and I know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah, I'm 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 trying to exactly figure out the smell you're talking about because I spent so many so long in my life in radio studios uh -huh. that I think I became immune to the smell. Probably, you know. I think mainly of the smell of the first radio station, the second radio station that I worked in, because mm. it was so unique. It was back when stations were still owned by individuals, and you oh, saw wow. your yeah. owner. Yeah. Yes, folks, and, that's amazing. At one time, they were owned by one individual. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, we, sometimes. Who you saw all the time. Yeah, and the it most they could own, the most they could own anywhere in the country was like, what, seven radio stations, I think Yes, it was? until 96, right after the FCC said, no! Clear Channel can co own everything. And then they bought 1,200 radio stations, and then they had to start mm -hmm. selling them because they couldn't afford it. Yeah. You know. And there, and I worked for Cumulus in Des Moines to cover, I always wanted to cover a presidential ramp up, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a blast. It was great. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of autonomy, you know, and uh, so the, but the, the thing there was, it was, uh, you know, owned in one town, it was a Des Moines station, and it was very uh, Christian conservative. Mm -hmm. And uh, but they didn't expect you to hew to that. Now, if you do a talk show on a Christian conservative station, you seem like a little more pressured yeah. to yeah. keep the tone. Yeah. yeah but I w wasn't pressured, and I love the people I work with. The Cumulus, something was filed against them. These class action suits, you can't even keep track of. And so I'll probably get a dollar seventy three for some slight that I didn't even feel, you know, from cumulus. Yeah. And 
that that's okay. And uh, what is it? The way class action suits come after every tendril of responsibility, like mm-hmm. Deutsche Bank just paid seventy five million to I Jeffrey saw- Epstein's victims. Yeah. What's yeah. with that? How deep does it go? Well, I, I hey, if Jeffrey Epstein's victims can get it, they should get it. You know, they should get it. Oh, I'm all for his victims being uh, compensated. All for it. Yeah. I just wonder. Makes me on a, on a broader level wonder where does responsibility begin and end? Well, it's hard to see. yeah, yeah. And is Deutsche Bank responsible? I guess they are. I mean, they were doing business with them, so they f- probably figured there was some culpability there. Yeah, they said that they didn't detect things in his banking activity. I don't know if it was like, he wrote a check to the same teenager <laughs> for the same amount four months in a row. Um, I don't think that's their response. I don't know. You know, I, don't I, know I can't see how it would be. There was, I'm going to go. have to go back and look at that case and see what they were asking for and uh, under what conditions. Yes. Know. And because I was immersed in that case and Giselle Maxwell um, uh, it was immersing, but I got to, I don't know, it, the details of it were really wearing me down. Yeah. And predatory behavior, even from afar, just... So it seems to, to me like, even though you're not a newswoman right now, mm-hmm. you're still hooked in. You're still watching the news. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so what, just, what sources... New York Times, we just established, is one of your sources. Yes. Um, one of my that was probably a good one. I just what I do is chase articles all over the internet. So I kind of have a gerrymandered Washington Post. I think is pretty credible. L.A. Times, mm-hmm. um, and uh, just you know offbeat. So I thought Vice was pretty good. It was interesting, and then it's you know bankrupt now. Yeah. But you know just everything from. Pe- even periodicals still have strength reporting strengths. Okay, Van- so Fair. so but when it comes to TV, you don't watch any of those networks. You know, I just don't. And Good I for you. TV. Good for you. Yeah, it's so it's so manipulative, and you can you I mean you feel manipulated from the time you click the channel. You know what I found the other day, which is is I think news wise, I would rely on it more than anything else. They have a, an app uh, that's on Roku and on Apple TV and things like that called uh, uh, CBS News. Yeah. And they do a 24 hour news cycle. That and I watched them yesterday and I said, this is amazing. There is no perceived bias when you're watching it. Great. I mean, because that's yeah. what you're supposed to strive for at every news well, you outlet. See, when you were always told to strive for that, no matter what your politics were, you were not supposed to let the audience know what your politics were. We didn't know what what Walter Cronkite's politics were. Exactly. Right. That's we just knew that we could rely on him for the news. Mm-hmm. And we wouldn't, right. we wouldn't rely on him as much. You know. Yeah, and that's like, but when the infotainment came in, like Entertainment Tonight, they mimicked a news setup, a news anchor. You know, they well, had then people, no but people lost the because Entertainment Tonight looked like a newscast. Exactly, people lost a a perception of what's a newscast and what isn't. Right, and I think that's even more fuzzy on the internet. Even some of these surveys, I always look to see who sponsored the statistics, the gathering of the statistics, and that will tell you how the statistics are going to skew. But if you don't have that information and it's getting less and less obvious, which is part of the manipulation package, Mm -hmm. uh, it just becomes, you have to, I think, find sources like spots of credibility and double check your first be wary and then double check, and if they still hold up, go yeah, with it. Well, I'm, I go nuts around here because every time I go into the bedroom or I go into the living room, where, wherever Marjorie happens to be, she's got MSNBC on. And I said, <laughs> what are yeah. you watching that propaganda for? Yeah. I said, find and some source. If you're going to watch the news, watch a source that isn't trying to get your dollar. You know? And, and CNBC, which I only became, you know, really aware of because my husband watches it for he's very into the stock market yeah and so 
I, you know, I like the fact that they have an agenda, but they're up front with it. It's mm -hmm. business. It's right. money. It's Wall Street. Yeah. And so, I mean, they tell you right up. Right. And yet they also give you a different perspective that I didn't have before and how it influences other things, which is kind of good. And, uh, well, I hear the siren. It sounds like they're coming to get you, and we're running out of time here. So, oh, uh, <laughs> okay. It, let's talk again uh, next time, okay? I really want to oh. and stick around after this so that we can talk, okay? Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson, my former newswoman in San Francisco. We woke up with each other every morning for like <laughs> I don't know what eleven years or something. Talk and we late. still like each other. Yeah, I, I love you. Okay, <laughs> we'll be. Thanks, Laurie. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, that is um, Laurie Thompson. For all of you, she was my newswoman <clears throat> on my radio show in San Francisco. Excuse my voice tonight. It's a little. When I was talking to her. I was hoarse, and then uh, I, I started coughing today, and now I've got a kind of a sore throat, and I think maybe I've been coming down with a cold. I haven't come down with a cold in a couple of years, I think. Anyway, so please excuse me, and I will try and make it through the show. Who is this? Let me put somebody up here, but I'm not going to put them on until I see who the hell they are, okay? If there's somebody we can admit, his name is Steve Muller. So let's see if he actually exists. Steve, are you there? Steve, can we hear you? Can we see you? There's nobody there. Okay, all right. Well, I, I don't know. There's nobody there. So um, why shouldn't I, why should he not be saying it? Oh, there he is. Can you hear me? Hi. How are you, Steve? Are you there? You're Alex. Yes. See, I can't believe it's you. You're like a rock star, too. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just uh, bring Sorry, in, let that. me bring in some other people too here. Let me bring in Jeff Stein. Uh, where are you, Steve? You must be in like in the Bay Area, huh? I am in Sacramento. Sacramento. So I... yeah. Wait, hold on a second. He's got a yeah. See, I can't believe it's you. You were like well, a rock star. Oh, if Jeff, turn your audio off. Yes. He always does that. Now there's another person, Eddie Jordan, who again, I mean, I don't know who this is, and I'm not going to take put your pictures on yet until I see who this guy is, because sometimes they just are people trying to get on and do something absolutely terrible. And oh, there he is. There's Eddie Jordan as well. Okay, all right. I can put you all on then. All right, here we go. Hello, Eddie Jordan. How are you? Good. Are you Are you there, Eddie? Yes. Okay. Where are you calling from? Hold on one second. I got too much going on. Oh, okay. Well, let's <laughs> let's go ask uh, Steve Muller. Uh, where is, so you're calling from Sacramento. What do you do, Steve? You haven't called the show before, have you? Yeah, Alex, I'm in Sacramento. You have radio history here, don't you? What? I'm in Sacramento. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, what do you do? Uh, I don't think you've called our program before, have you? What is all that no, chat? I never have. You've got I'm to, maybe, hold on a second. I never have, Alex. Let me dial back in. I'm getting like crazy weird audio. Well, I think that happens to be Jeff. Jeff, would you mute yourself and let's see if that kills it? Wait a minute. Are you, are you, did you mute yourself? Mute myself. Oh, boy. Um, here, I think I can mute you. No, oh, I can ask you to mute. Oh, there we go. Okay, and there's still a chatter of some sort. Okay, Steve, call us back, will you? Okay, and uh, Eddie, where are you calling from? I'm in Thailand right now. Thailand? 
Let me see. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think. Is that the furthest away? Well, wait a minute. Which is further? Thailand, which was Siam at one time. Well, there we go. Or, or is it, um, is, is it, um, let me ask you this, is, or is, 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 is Malaysia closer or further away from Thailand? It's kind of in the, in the same. Uh, okay, because we have somebody that calls us from Malaysia. Somebody that calls us from Malaysia. Yeah. So anyway, we're in Thailand. Um, John Tim. It's a, a beach resort, beach town. Oh, okay. I I I, sh I should I probably should act like I've heard of it, but I never have. So you know. Yeah. yeah so. Uh, it's uh, like a hundred miles from Bangkok, on the beach. Really? Uh, I've called the show before. Have you? Have you? Yes, I. Well, I seem to re yeah. remember the name. We, were you in in Thailand yeah, at that to, time? I called once from Thailand and we had a really bad connection, but I, I was living in Vallejo, California before. Yeah. And I used to call. Yeah. But now you have. But now I, now I live here. Now you have good Wi Fi, do you? Yeah. Okay. You got, you got the uh, fiber optic internet. Yeah. Good to go. Uh huh. And and do you have all the. Con I imagine, you know, we, we tend to think of these places as being remote and foreign countries and so on, but you, you've got cable TV there and things like that, right? And you got the internet. Yep. You apparently have a good internet because it's a good signal that we're getting. Yeah. I paid uh, like $300 for it for a year. Oh, for a year? For a year. So, so you yeah. pay in advance, do you? Yeah, I, they had a deal pay. Yeah. Equivalent of $300 and I said, hey, yeah. So Can't do you do, do you work there, Eddie? Do you work in Thailand? No, I'm re I'm retired. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Well, I'm 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 suffering a sore throat today. I I don't know. I think I'm coming down with a cold, which I have no idea how I'm getting a cold. I never leave the house. You know. So. Whatever. Uh, and uh, we're waiting to see if uh, 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 Mueller can call back. Whether he is or not, I don't know. But uh, what happens is when we get strange names that we either haven't seen or don't see regularly, we get a little suspicious because we have people who then, what they call Zoom bombers. And so I go to them and all of a sudden we have two people having sex and they're usually two males. I don't know why it's always male porn. It's never anything that I would uh, go for. Here, here comes Steve again. Um, Steve is in. Okay, Steve, there you are. Okay, connect your audio. Yeah, there seems to be a little bit of a. Well, oh, there's a little bit of a problem, but I'm not going to worry about it for the time being. So you live in Sacramento, right? I do. Am I coming through loud and clear? Yeah, you're coming through loud and clear. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I do. I live in Sacramento, and I'm one of your old-time fans from way back, you know. I used to work in Silicon Valley, lived in Mountain View. Yeah. I used to hear Miss Laurie on the radio and uh, Mr. Bubbles. Well, if you like, if you watch the beginning of the show tonight, I was on with Laurie. That's what I saw on Facebook. I said, holy crap, he's got Laurie back. I got I to gotta yeah. go see this. So yeah. here I am. <laughs> yeah, we do these. Th we're doing these uh, these calls now. And, Very cool. it, and it's like nothing, no time has passed. When we, we just picked right up where we left off. We have the same well, kind of relationship. Man, I'll, give, I'll give you one right back at you, Alex. Just literally this morning, mm -hmm. I saw Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders just in the news. It's her birthday or something, right? Really? And I remembered I went to your studio back in the 90s, or, and Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders showed up on her own with a guitar and a guitar amp set it up at like seven in the morning and played a pretender song and i just remember thinking okay that's a professional musician i'm i'm a bedroom noodler this lady like it, she's great she's like staggered out of the fairmont hotel after a gig the night before shows up at your place on her own guitar and amp and do just, you know i wish i remembered that 
Yeah, no, I remember it made a big, I remember everybody was like, holy cow, I think we just saw something right there. It was very cool. Yeah, well, no, it's amazing you mention it to me because I don't remember it. See, that's your problem. Well, you know, I did, look, how many... You did a zillion hours. How many, how many hours of shows did I do out of San Francisco? You know, 11 years, 11, 12 years, something yeah. like that. So and it's not like you showed up for 45 minutes and then went home. Or so, something. you know, it's, sometimes you're going to forget some of the shows. And I don't know Absolutely. why I forget that one, but gee, it sounds like it was a great show. I wish I wish I could find a tape of it somewhere. I do. No, it was very cool. It was very cool. A lady shows up with her guitar and just flipping rocks. You, like, you know, I should oh. find out where uh, where it is because I may have that tape here. I have a thousand tapes. Yeah. Of old shows, cassettes, but they're very hard to go through, you know. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. But no, you're well remembered around here, and um, yeah. What can I say? Especially Lori too. Yep. I used to have ideas of like mm -hmm. showing up at a nightclub on a Friday night and hoping she might show up or something, you know. Yeah. So what what uh, what do you do now? I actually am retired. Um, I worked for. 20 plus years in the biotech industry there in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So I'm out of the game now. I don't work anymore. You don't work uh, anymore. No. So we have two, well, actually four retirees here. That's what we have. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I got medical stuff I could babble about, but like you were joking about organs a little earlier. Well, organ you know. recitals. Yeah. I yeah. wish I could still work. I, I, I miss it tremendously. It's a it's a trap we fall into as we well, well did you retire yeah. yourself or did they retire you? No, I had a health I hit a health snag. Fortunately well resolved and everything, but my days of sort of working um I used to call it seven to seven, you know, seven in the morning till seven o'clock that night and the parking lot's all full with everybody working. I just I can't do it anymore. Once once uh once a little bit of the medical trauma and drama. Well, when you hit. had the medical trauma, did you get some kind of relief for that? I mean, did the company keep paying you or did it was oh, some kind of program? Well, basically, yes. Yes. In fact, when I went in front of the disability judge, she said, you haven't worked for 15 months. You know, how did you make it? Where's all that money coming from? It's like, well, I worked for this. I worked for this company for like close to 20 years. And so they your your sort of disability what do they call it severance money stacked mm -hmm. up yeah to, um, yeah you know i didn't get rich off it but i didn't have to worry about paying my bills for quite a while put it that way let me well i got severance from sirius xm yeah and to tell you uh what uh, kind of uh, got people they are uh i got what was it six weeks severance no 12 weeks of severance okay uh, of, of my salary and then that was it and i worked yeah, for them for almost 10 years you know they gave us like two months a year or something you know what i mean yeah yeah but at least you got a, a fairly decent amount of money there to keep you going for a while oh yeah and i needed it to be honest i needed it i had just gotten sick and sort of checked out of everything to do with that previous life of, and um so it, it blessed in that way but yeah, um, it was yeah. all it was all harshly attached to reality of things I was sort of wishing hadn't happened and you know? and how about you uh, Eddie you you said you're retired right yes did you get retired or did you decide to retire or was there mandatory uh, retirement or what was it I was working at oil refinery when uh, COVID kicked off and they laid off all the contractors and they mm -hmm. said we'll call you back when we this figure it out on what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And they called me back and I said, oh, sorry, who is this? You know, <laughs> I, already, I figured out I didn't need to work anymore. And I, Oh, okay. I got some, uh, some disability from the, from the VA that carries me over. And yeah, then um, my retirement kicked in and social security. And then, then I moved to Thailand. So it oh. goes, Three times as far. Now, what? Let me ask you. You were, I guess, still living in the Bay Area, right? When, when I was. Yeah. I was until uh, February. Until February, and then you decide to move somewhere, and you say, "Hey, Thailand sounds like a good idea." Yeah. Why did you decide that? 
Well, my wife's from Thailand. Okay. And, uh, and yeah. I've been here probably 15 times before this trip, so. I can't tell you how many people, like guys I know, who their wives come from another country, and then when they retire, they move to their wife's ex-country. Like, I have yeah. a friend that just moved to the Philippines. Uh, and uh, he had a, wo a wife from the Philippines, and she wanted to go back there. So he said, fine, I'm retired, let's go. You know? Yeah. So, uh, you know. I can really stretch a dollar here. Really? Not as expensive over there, is it? No. Okay, so you've got what, a house? Uh, did you buy a house or did you do? You... Right now, I have a two bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is 450 a month, $450 a month. Really? Oh, that's, not, yeah. yeah, here in New York, and, uh, that would be about $5,000 a month. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm just, I can walk to the beach and it's a five minute walk from where I'm sitting right now. Yeah. And everything's pretty peaceful in that part of the world now, right? Yeah. So you found yeah. a place on the on the planet where there isn't grief going on. Not not really. I, you go down the south to southern Thailand, and they have they gets close to Malaysia. Yeah. And they have a, a high Muslim population, and mm -hmm. there's some separatists that set off bombs every now and then. Every now and then. Well, I, what what is it? Well, I haven't a, heard of it what's since a, I've been here. What's but. a bomb between friends? Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, and 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 you, uh, uh, Jeff. Why did you decide to live in Connecticut? <laughs> That's a good, good choice. Um, originally, being a New Yorker, mm -hmm. and I had a, I had a job, a real cool job, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I was there like two weeks, and the guy goes, "I hate to tell you this." Well, we're closing down this division. <laughs> and I said, what? She goes, yeah. And we'll give you like two months money. Oh, really? I said, how about three months? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I was in Florida for a while and trying to see if there was something down there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it didn't work out, so I just came back to New York and asked somebody if they had some opportunities, and they had one in Connecticut, which was mm -hmm. in the medical business, which I really liked. So that's what I did, and I started my own little business doing that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, but that was before the stroke, right? Yeah, yeah. that was um, about... Uh, Almost, I've been there like, I think over how, 20 how years. How long has it been since you had your stroke? It's got to be about 15 well, years? it's getting to be 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and you, you were married at the time, right? It's 25 years according to the the backup. Right, well, I seem to remember something like 15, 20. Yeah, when yeah. you told me. So the wife knows when you had the stroke, but you don't. So that's how bad well, the stroke was. Well, remember, I, I couldn't even talk for a year. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. Yeah. But here you, are, here you are, well, 25 years later, and you're in pretty good shape. You know, I mean, you've still got effects from the stroke, but. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. The biggest problem is I can't read very effectively. Yeah. But I can do it t today using a computer so mm. I get it to read to me. Yeah. 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 That's great. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. It's funny, mm. he talks about this, but you before were working on what, not art artificial hearts, but heart implants, right? So, yeah, all the surgical instruments that, that was necessary to do the, the, the different kind of surgery. And the very things that saved your yeah. life, you had helped Oh, obviously, some of the things were done right here, and they're still in there. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Where is everybody else tonight? See, this is getting strange. This is getting This is strange. Thursday. Remember? Tonight, we have two people who we don't normally see, and that's fine. That's great. I love the change in, in people, you know. But where are the rest of them? 
Yeah. You know? That's why well, I called tonight. It's great. I'll say this as a fan. I mean, you remind me of like an old blues man, John Lee Hooker or something, where you're just keeping going. You're still broadcasting. I love it. Um, I'm, I'm still it doing it. Talent. Yeah. yeah I'm, it's, it's, um, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You had what to get what me. can I say? I know you know what I'm talking about, dude. Well, I'm sorry you got me on a night when I've got something something in my throat. I don't know. No, throat. don't worry. You sound um, good. Those old shows were loads of fun there in San Francisco. Some days I'd go to work. I, I didn't go many times. I realistically went like four times, actually showed up in the in the little studio. And it'd be I'd, I'd be like going down Market Street or wherever I happened to be heading off to work at that time. Yeah. I think, you know... I'm just let's burn a couple hours and I'd go over to your studio and it was it was very cool thing you had there with the, with the audience and um I remember when Pat Oswalt was the new guy that everybody liked but yeah. he was like the new kid on the block that's and right he, he was intimidated by a, by all the other local San Francisco comics who who were legends and everything but, but he um, also held his own very well you it's know. a funny game, isn't it? You know, entertainment. You know, um, it's funny. You talk about nice guys. I got to say this about uh, about him, and I don't know where to get a hold of him. Otherwise, I'd have him on the show. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but a lot of comedians, when they leave me, let's say, and I raise them, gotcha. raise them from a pup. Okay. That's right. Never got a hold of me again. No, I know the names you're talking you know, about. Uh, Pat Oswald went out of his way once to call me up after That's he had cool. started making it in L.A. and stuff and just saying, yeah. I'm in San Francisco. I'm doing a, a half-hour comedy show for, 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 I think it was HBO, and I wanted to thank you because you made this all possible. Oh, and, that is cool. And, and that was, to me, that was very nice because considering that I never expected to ever hear anything from anybody of that sort, I heard right. it from him, you know. In, but, you know, from what I remember, those couple times I saw him there, it makes sense. He was the new guy. Oh, yeah, he was the new guy. He, he was yeah. a kid. He was the one who was intimidated by, you know, Bobby Slayton or whoever well, was Well, I'm intimidated that. by Bobby Slayton for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean, though, that the slightly bigger name. He was still, he was the new guy. And um, I remember Lori just thought he was hilarious. And um, yeah, I remember that to this day. And I'm a big fan. My favorite comic is Bubbles. I'm a degenerate. And well, Bubbles so. does his show every he once does. a week. He'll be on tomorrow that, night. Yeah, that's where I got onto you. I looked you up years a few years ago on YouTube. I'm like, wow, Alex is still out there. Very yeah. cool. Uh, Eddie, let me ask you, where whereabouts did you live again? Uh, uh, Vallejo. Vallejo. Okay. Vallejo. There you go. Yeah. Why Vallejo? Well, I guess were there some tech companies up there? It's close to the oil refineries. Oh, oil. You were in oil. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. And originally I was from Florida and I came out to California for work and ended up just staying there for 20 years. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I got stuck in New York because um, I got stuck in New York. You know, even after it was all over, I had married Marjorie, my wife, my current wife. Okay. And uh, I said, well, you know, uh, I guess you don't want to move. And she said, no, I ain't moving out of New York. She just, she, she was adamant. She's, you know what her thing was? Uh, all my hospitals are here. <laughs> good I saw an article that said that New York City was a really good place to retire for elderly people for that exact reason. They well, it has the best hospitals probably in the country. Right. Yeah. And they said they're all less than a quarter of a mile from your apartment or whatever. So, well, yeah. no, uh, uh, Mount Sinai is about a quarter of a mile from me. And that's our cool. hospital of choice. And every time I pass by it on a bus, I look at it and go, well, that's where I'm going to die someday. You know, I mean, right <laughs> that's the closest hospital. Like the exactly. few, few medical emergencies I've had, nothing really serious, but I, I, when I've been hauled away by an ambulance, that's where we went, you know. It's nice to establish a little certainty around the details of one's upcoming demise and all that good yes, stuff. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so, you know, um, but every time I even get something like a sore throat, I'm going, well, this is it. You know, <laughs> I'm through. Because, you know, I'm 83 years old. That's the way you think. 
Yeah. And I've, and I've had some close friends die on me and stuff, and that's kind of put me in a certain frame of mind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, but anyway, the reason we don't leave here is because Marjorie refuses to leave here. And then there's this whole story about how we had a whole problem with this apartment. We have a 2,500 square foot apartment. Oh, it, man. It's uh, three bedrooms, one of which I use here as a studio. Yeah. And a huge living room, a huge dining room, a huge kitchen, two bathrooms, you know. And um, we got into a whole legal thing with the guy who uh, sublet us the apartment, mm. where he really wasn't allowed to, not at the rate he was charging us. Well, one thing led to another, and he sued us and the landlord, and we sued him back. And finally, after all was said and done, we went to court, and we were allowed to stay in this apartment at a monthly rent of $500 and seven cents a month. That's an amount of money a person can come up with. That is a, that is a lot of nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, so I sit here and I go, you know, even if I got a, couple, a half a million dollars or something and I would decide to go buy a house upstate, I would still yeah. keep this apartment. At five hundred dollars a month, come on, you know. It's in but, the city. But yeah. so, if I ever wanted to leave, once my wife's job was over, which was about a year and a half ago, mm. uh, I, the thought of leaving now is impossible. Where am I going to get a rent like this anywhere in the United States? For crying out loud! No. What What did you say you were paying in in uh, in, in uh, Thailand? Thailand. Four fifty. $450. Oh, you're paying less than me. How dare you? <laughs> and you yeah. 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 I make it up That's in air great. condition. Yeah, what what are the rents like up in Sacramento? You know, they used to be cheap, but they've gone up. They're not Bay Area like, but you don't drive around town all afternoon seeing, "Oh, look, there's the big cheap apartment complex on the corner with a with a place for 600 bucks." Mm -hmm. That that is what evaporated was the the lower end now we're lucky we bought our house years ago but but at the at the i want to be a renter and i want to be in that you know lower percent i want to pay cheap rent those places evaporated suppose and now those places they're they're like a minimum i believe of like 1500 a month for like a crappy sort of one bedroom out on the busy street with the yeah, with the cop car zooming. Well, by in San Francisco, and, you know, try a one bedroom for at least three thousand right. dollars a month. Right? No, it's still a lot cheaper in SAC. You're right. You know, uh, do you have the same? Now we've been talking about these problems that San Francisco has been having. Yeah. You know, with the people sleeping in the tents on the streets and defecating on the sidewalks, and uh, fentanyl. Yeah. They're a big fentanyl town because fentanyl's cheaper there than it is anywhere else in the country. Yeah. So all the addicts for fentanyl go live in, on, on the street in San Francisco. Yeah, and San, yeah. and, and that, that town has supposedly, somebody said, don't come back. You, won't, you, you, know, you, you wouldn't know it. You and know. I understand why they would say that. So I love San Francisco. I lived there in the 90s, just like you. Same thing, you know. And, um, but the amount, well, here's where it gets us. I have a wife, I have kids, they, they get bored on the weekend and it's, it's 70 miles from here, right? So Saturday morning we think let's down a bunch of coffee and like we used to, let's just drive over there and go have some fun. Mm -hmm. That ain't looking like so much fun right now. It's, um, it's a little bit of a scene over there. And and you and you know that you know the city well, so the the tourist hotels are all near the Tenderloin, and you know the theater district. You know the theater district is off of Union it. Square, which is now all the all the stores around Union yeah, Square are closing. A, Alex, it's just a flipping scene around there now. Yeah. So what went down from one guy you might see up an alley smoking something fishy that's probably stronger than weed? You know, that's kind of like when you and I lived there in the '90s. That's now escalated to just full on, just open air 
drug use everywhere all the time. Um, it's it's hard to describe. It's very sad. Um, I'm pretty liberal, but I I want the uh, something's got to give. It's one of those situations. It's you know this is getting ridiculous. Yeah, we can't we we can go there, but we won't because there's too, there's more fun places to go. I mean, I don't want to take my 14 year old daughter over there to see a guy fixing up or something. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just that one step beyond. Yeah. The old days, it was somebody smoking a joint or whatever, and she yeah. would understand. Do you have those problems, though, of people in tents and defecating on the streets in Sacramento? Not so much in Sacramento. We definitely have people in tents. Um, we, we have a, you know what it is, though? It's, it's very well hidden because it exists along the river. So they actually kind of sleep in trees and... Um, and along the river and then go into town maybe to do whatever they need to do. But, but, but actually I'm diminishing it. The answer is yes, we have it. It's just not quite at that level where you walk out of your, your apartment building, like in San Francisco, take three steps down the street and there's like a, it's not, in, what it's not doing is impinging on residential Correct. neighborhoods. Okay. Remember when you lived in that San Francisco, that thing where you'd walk out the door and one day everybody's smiling and happy. And the next day there's, there's like people screaming at each other and pulling hair out of each other's heads and stuff. That sort of random city life. Um, Sacram Sacramento's quieter than that. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to work in Sacramento. Uh, you after did. I le well, I after I left Line Live 105, I went to work with a company, uh, and then I did it, what I had to do from San Francisco uh, oh, called okay. Play Incorporated, and we started the That's first right. the first video. Uh, internet network. That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. They made transcoders or things. I can't yeah. remember. And yes. we and we did it out of the, the company was in Sacramento, so I used to have to drive up there like three days a week. Gotcha. Until I started doing the shows from San Francisco, and then I never had to go up there. Yeah. But uh, you know, I knew Sacramento pretty well, and I lived in Sacramento in my early career. I remember at, that. At, I remember you saying that. At a classical music, not a classical music, good, a good music <laughs> station. You know what they call it? With a, a good music station is like, uh, you know, Montavani and Andre Castellanitz and that kind of crap, which I got nobody you. knows who I'm talking about right now. And thank God you don't know because these people should not be remembered on any musical level. <laughs> okay. Um, so, and you were, you, you were in Vallejo. Had it turned at all before you left? Uh, it's, it's always been kind of seedy, you know, ever since uh, Mary Allen closed, they lost a lot of tax money and they laid off a bunch of police and there's a bunch of homeless, but they're pretty well congregated. And so when Mary Island closed, different. they were in trouble, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize that. They, they, I remember when I used to drive by, by Mare Island, they used to have all the, the mothball fleet was there. Yes. Where all, there were all these ships that were mothballed. In case people don't know what we're talking about, yeah. when you mothballed a ship, they covered it with a whole bunch of stuff to preserve it so it wouldn't fall apart. You know, and so it wouldn't fall I'm apart. Take this call. One second. Uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, imagine he's getting calls on his cell phone in Thailand. Okay. All right. Uh, no, but, Alex, that. that pile of rusting old ships mm -hmm. is uh, the reason that that part of the Bay Area is actually very high, or used to be, I don't know if it still is, on the old Soviet and Russian nuclear target list was because it was a military place that had dozens of rusting old ships. Rusting old ships, yeah. Yes. Exactly. And so you need right. to nuke the heck out of that east side of the Bay Area and just turn it to dust. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, wait a minute. Here comes Tony. Let's see here. Tony. Is this is this Tony? Is it Tony? It is Tony. Okay, we want to make sure it's Tony and not some phony Tony. Um, um, uh, what was I going to say? There was something I was going to bring up. Oh yeah, uh, you 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 were lifting your guitar there. Do you play? Well, you must I look do. at I'm you. Kind of a I'm kind of a bedroom noodler, but yes, no, I, I But do if, play. if you're a bedroom noodler, you've got way too many guitars to just you know, simply be. You know what it is? I can explain it directly. It's the one thing I'm materialistic about. I could bankrupt a small nation on 
guitars at the right store. And I haven't done that. But, this but is why? Like if you say you're just a noodler, you'd think all you need is one little guitar, maybe two, and that's yeah. it. But you look like, you know, some professional musician who has every guitar known to mankind. <laughs> nah, all my, well, semi, like semi-professional years and years ago. But no, I just like them. It's the thing. Like every four or five years, I save up a little wad of money and buy one. That's, could you, and could this, you just noodle for us a little bit? You got a Gibson on the wall? I think that's a Gibson, right? The one on the left. This is actually a weird guitar I bought in high school. I lived in England in high school, and um, but it it is a Gibson type guitar. It's a Gibson. Right. You are right. Wow. But now it's very cool. Yeah. So could you play some for us? Oh yeah. Okay. I've been playing summertime. I I don't know if you hear it. Oh, what? Oh, you got your amp somewhere. I'll have to set it up, Alex. Give me. Keep talking. I'll, I'll plug it all, all the crap in. Okay, plug it in. Come on, you're not going to get out of here without oh, actually, playing okay, something. Oh, right, 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 right. Let me, let me do this. I'm <laughs> uh, use the acoustic. Use an acoustic. Yeah, acoustic. Yeah, there you go. That'll oh. do it. You know. Lately, I've been playing the old uh, Gershwin song, Which one? Summertime, a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not mm -hmm. expecting much, okay? <laughs> When is it? It's it's for some reason the sound is not coming through. Talk to it's me. It's just not flying, huh? Yeah, get the guitar yeah, closer. For some reason it's it's like I'm barely here. No, uh, yeah, it's weird. You know what? I I bet the weird little computer microphone is tuned to voice and blocking these frequencies or something. What it is is it's uh, it's uh, it, it's automatically adjusting the microphone. It is. And I think the guitar is too loud. Is what the and, problem and is. It could be the guitar is full of, of nasty honking mid-range frequencies that it may flush to make voice come through better. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised. Well, I play the guitar for you, but I don't have a guitar here. And even if I did, I don't play the guitar. So, you know, no. <laughs> that, that, that'd be your starting point. Yeah. I'm so happy you're in New York. I know you love that city. So it's, Well, I, it's... I did love it. You know, I could leave it tomorrow and I wouldn't <laughs> care. You know, uh, how I about, got you. How about you, Tony? You're a Queens guy. You're really, you he's know, a real Nor New Yorker. Listen, I'm to a him. real New You know, that's I've a real been... thing. I don't know if I can, you know, my sister always says it. My brother, hey, would you want to move down to Florida if I bought a house? He was saying this. This is, I tell my brother, says, I can't, I can't leave New York. It's in my blood now, I think. Oh, like, you, you know, know you're, you're, the you're, you're, you're as New York as New York gets. Yeah, I mean, Alex, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. I'd have to have family there or a friend that I would to pull me out there to another place. Yeah. Then I would think about it. I couldn't do it solo. Yeah. But if you're a real New Yorker, let's see here. Yeah. Reply, reply to me when I say this, okay? Yeah. Here we go, getting demonetized. Fuck you. No, Fuck no. you. Oh, yeah. you love to say that. No, yeah. no, no. What you have to come back with, the true New Yorker, right? Fuck me. Oh, true well, you. well, that's one of them. That's but, one of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Fuck you. That's yeah, it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So that's Tony, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. And It'd be hard to move. Like, Alex, when you moved out of San Francisco, was it hard to leave your hometown to work at all these places? Did you ever get homesick? Well, yeah, I, I always get homesick. Every time I see a, a TV show that's done in San Francisco. I mean, it's got to be hard. You know, and I recognize the street when they turn the block, you know. Yeah. I'm immediately, uh, like there was a show, Chance, that was out recently with you, Lori, on Hulu. And uh, we watched the whole thing again. And it took place in San Francisco, and I, I, it just—I watched it, and I just went, "Oh God, I wish I were there," you know. And then Bubbles told me, "No, you don't want to be here," yeah. you know. It, it, that's the San Francisco you left. It's not the San Francisco that's here now. And so, uh, excuse me, I have to blow my nose. <clears throat> right, he's right, Alex. What? Uh, he is right. It's a shell of what it was, sort of. Um, Every city must do this to some degree, but I agree. I agree with. Well, with I was Bob. born and raised in that town. You were, you know, and and you love the town you were born. Well, a lot of times you don't love the town you were born and raised in, but what happened to me is I went away, and I came to New York, and I worked in New York, 
And uh, then I came home to San Francisco and I suddenly realized how much I love the city, how yeah, much I truly I missed it. You know, I was going across the Golden Gate Bridge one day and I said, God, this is gorgeous. How come I never saw this? Because yeah. all those years I had been driving across the Golden Gate Bridge over and over and over again and just took it for granted. Yeah. You know, it's like I talk about people who say, New York's very noisy, isn't it? I said, you wouldn't know because after you've lived here, you cut the sound off in your head. It just, you immediately cancel the noise. And, and a lot of that happens when you live somewhere and it's really beautiful and it's really wonderful, but you just take it for granted. I went across the Golden Gate Bridge, here's my toll, screw you, you know? And I never looked out at the city from there or anything. And when I came home, suddenly, after 10 years of not being there, I saw all this and I went, God, this is an amazing town. You know. you know, I always laugh about San Francisco is it's a city that's exceptionally beautiful on a macro scale. So get up on a hillside and look out over it. Go off on the Marin, Marin Headlands and look back at the city. It's absolutely filthy and disgusting on a micro scale. Don't go like sit on a sidewalk, you know. Oh, I'll tell you, New York's a lot like that. New York's I see, like pic I see right. pictures of New York taken from New Jersey or I see Incredible. pictures of New York that are taken from the air. And I yeah. go, this is one of the most beautiful metropolitan cities in the world. It is, exactly. Until you're right down on the street, <laughs> yeah, right. driving down the street. San you know? Francisco's right. like And then that you go, that. none of this is beautiful. The buildings. It's, horrendous. it's absolutely horrendous when you go down to that micro scale. Like they put this thing in our building here. This building I'm in was born, was born it was built in 1900 by the Astors, okay. and uh, it was a, uh, it's a, it's an incredible building. I mean, I have landlords that don't know how incredible it is because they do nothing to fix it up. But mm. the fact is they've had to do some work on it lately, and the work they've done on it uh, is, um, they're, they're pointing it, you know, they, 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 you have the bricks and they have to put all the stuff in between the bricks and redo it because it hasn't been done since like 1900 or something. So they have to put up around the building, I don't know, what do they call it, scaffolding. Yeah. To prevent bricks and stuff from falling down on people. So they've had this thing up for about three years now while they've been working on the building. And it has been, it, it, I call it a homeless shelter <laughs> because all the homeless people sit under it. You know, and uh, uh, it's, it, but all, a lot of buildings in New York, I mean, I, I, I'd have to say 20% of the buildings in New York all have these scaffoldings on them. Now, my mom lived in London for many years. It was exactly the same. You just walk out from her house in the morning. Yeah. You could just stop on a street corner and just open your ears. Every direction you would hear drills, hammers, gouging implements, um, concrete trucks pulling up. The whole city was under constant renovation. Yeah, well, this it's this is the same thing with New York. It's the exact same thing you're talking about. By the way, we've been joined by Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. Hi. Uh, well, um, Hello. From San Francisco. Why did you, you why did you decide to call all of a sudden? Uh, I, got, uh, I got bored with what I was watching on TV. Oh, really? So, <laughs> so you thought you'd get bored here? <laughs> Yeah, well, I was you know listening to you guys uh, talk, and I thought it was very interesting. And uh, yeah, what's happened to San Francisco is 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 pathetic. It's it's sad. And well, I and I saw this documentary they did on CNN about it, and they really exemplif ex amplified what was really wrong with San Francisco. You know, well, it's not just San Francisco. It's uh, Los Angeles, New York. No, but it's not. It's supposedly San Francisco. It is especially horrible because that was the most beautiful city in America. Okay, it certainly, it certainly was. Yeah, I, and I, it's I, not I'm anymore. It, it, you know, that's the tragedy. When it happens to L.A., L.A. has always sucked. <laughs> you know, New York has always had its level of filth. I mean, it went through when I first came to New York. You would go down to the subway and you would see a subway car go by, and it was a riot of color because all these people have done graffiti on the side of the trains. 
But and I felt, I don't, know if, I don't know if you remember those old trains, I felt actually it was an improvement on those trains. <laughs> you know. Hmm? Yeah, you know, a lot of uh, artists uh, became famous uh, uh, for their work. Uh, uh, who was the guy that did all the outlines? Oh, uh, well, yeah, but, uh, Herring, Keith Herring. Yeah, Keith he's Herring. Not, I have a Keith Herring uh, lithograph really? that is signed by Keith Herring. Framed That's worth money, Alex. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He died young. Yeah, no, he did a thing at, uh, there was a, com a club called the Something Eight. I'm trying to remember the name of it. And uh, he did a a, a a painting for them, one of his nice. things. And he came to San Francisco to debut it. And uh, I got him, he came to the show and I got him to sign one for me. I remember they used to, on the uh, light posts, they had Keith Haring uh, uh, banners hanging when they had his exhibition in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. It was really, it was really, it's a really... Uh, Nice poster. I, I'm very happy with it. Uh, one of the few pieces of art I own. What, Jeff? I think uh, Connecticut is really under construction. Oh, really? It, yeah, it's been under the roads, the streets, and all of that. I think what we're establishing yeah. here is all these cities are very nice if you're not on the ground, <laughs> on the ground level, you know? But, uh, because from a distance, I'm sure San Francisco still looks great. Oh, beautiful. You know? I mean, it's a wonderful town with the hills and the and Coit Tower. I, of course, I always talk about Coit Tower because yeah, Coit, Coit, Coit Tower was my first love. Mm -hmm. He was my first friend. <laughs> uh, I always talk about being a kid and lying in my bedroom and out my window because we were on Telegraph Hill. There was Coit Tower. And during the war, uh, you could barely see it, only during the day. But then I remember when I was a kid, the first night after the war, they weren't worried about blackouts and things like that, and they lit up Koi Tower. And I went, that thing lights up? And, wow, that's really cool. and I would sit there and dream about Koi Tower coming down to visit me, and we'd go out and play together, you know. <laughs> and as I like to joke, uh, this is a constant joke of mine, is that it wasn't until I studied Freud that I found out why I was obsessed by Koi Tower, <laughs> you know. Then you went to Washington, D.C., and yeah, okay, I got you. I went to Washington D.C. What was that? What? Oh, they got the. Um, oh yeah, the they had Washington Valley Monument. Valley. The Washington Monument. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Do you know why that thing has two different colors to it? Did you ever notice that? No. About halfway up, it's like it starts becoming a different color, because okay. the first half of it was to, constructed Monument. during before the Civil War, oh, that's and when right. the Civil War came along, it stopped. And after yep. the Civil War, they said, well, we can't just have this thing sitting here half done. So they went out and they finished it, but they couldn't, the quarries that they were using no longer existed. So they had to use different quarries, a yeah. different shade of rock, and that's why it's two different shades. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know, I actually never heard that story. That's cool. Yeah, that's our, that's our history here. What are you looking at, Phil? Uh, I clicked on webcam settings and I uh, it's unpinned and I don't know where it is. Well, oh, you don't know where it is. <laughs> it's hidden somewhere. Oh, okay. Well, what, which, which, which? You mean the settings for uh, for Zoom for camera? For Zoom camera. Well, yeah, for for any camera, you know. Well, just go to your Zoom and you go to video and you'll find your camera there. No, no, no. I have the camera. It's webcam settings is a program you told me about oh oh okay all right to change yeah. your zoom and things like that yeah that's that's good so um um what what's new with you phil anything uh let's see uh I, i'm going to do an ice plunge uh oh boy the, here we go again this, this guy this, this guy if by the way if any of you have some kind of thing like this that you can do He's a sucker and will do it for any price. Go ahead, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> so at the gym, they uh, created, uh, they've got this barrel that uh, they put in fresh water, but it's only 49 degrees. And I, you know, uh, I've, I've been in 49 degree water before, of course, with an exposure suit, but uh, you know, it's two, three minutes and it's supposed to be really I, healthy. I and, can't remember when I did it, but yeah. I did a real ice plunge. Really? Oh, yeah. 
where Did I mean, the bay? no, this was in a it was in a gym. They yeah. had an ice plunge, yeah. and then they had a hot water plunge. And what you would do, uh -huh. the theory is, you jump into the cold water. Yeah. Which I'm telling you, I nearly passed out. Okay. It's I mean, cool. when you hit that cold water, it just boom. But what it does is it, it's, it, oh, it, oh, I know what you do. You go into the hot water first. Mm -hmm. The hot water opens your pores. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you somehow go into another pool that kind of cleans it off or a shower and clean it off. And then you jump into the ice water and it slams your pores shut. Mm -hmm. So that it, 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 all, the, all the dirt and stuff doesn't stay in the pores. I swear to you, going into that ice plunge, I mean, you you say 49 degrees. I'm talking about this was an ice plunge. <laughs> yeah. Frozen, huh? Well, no, if it was a real I, frozen to ice temperature, there, yeah. I wouldn't be able to be in it. But, yeah. you know, it was close, man. It's supposed to take uh, a deal with uh, inflammation and things like that. And then there's a sauna in the same room. So you, you go from the plunge into the sauna and, uh, you know, I, I figured I'd give it a try. Well, try going from the sauna into the plunge. <laughs> That's what I had to do. This was in Houston, Texas, I believe. I, yeah. can't, I can't remember where it was. I seem to remember it was Houston. And yeah, then, uh, let's see, Saturday I'm going to shoot uh, uh, some MMA uh, matches at Keysar Stadium, mm -hmm. 20 matches. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, our friend John Perulis uh, gets me the access there. Well, this your friend John Perulis, because he never calls this program, so. You can yell at him. Huh? <laughs> I, I don't know why. I don't think you like him. I, I, I try. You know something? What happens is I can't remember why I didn't like him. He's a wonderful guy. He Probably really is. is, but I can't remember why I don't like him anymore. So if he were to call me, I'd just be really nice to him. Well, he, he's, uh, he's a good friend to Ray and to me. Really? And, uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, any, anyway, that's Saturday. He's and trying to Sunday. steal all my friends is what the guy is doing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what friends? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then Sunday, I'm going down to Monterey. Mm -hmm. And uh, my buddy is on Monday is going to straighten out my new computer and get it, uh, get it all synced with Lightroom. Uh, and, what do you mean and, synced? What what is it? Is well, the simplest I've got, computer known to mankind, Phil? I got a hundred thousand a hundred thousand photos in Lightroom, and yeah. they're in catalogs. And the catalog has to be able to see the photo, and it won't see it from a new computer unless you match the photos with the catalog. And it takes some no light, Lightroom. It, it's all it, well. I won't, I won't even get into it. Go spend $1,000 to get it fixed. Well, yeah. And uh, I'm staying at the Monterey Plaza Spa. Uh, right on. How many pictures know, do you have? About 100,000. About 100,000? They're not going to fit on your hard drive, on oh, your, yeah, on your the, SSD. New, I got a new SSD. Uh, it's got uh, 8 terabytes. It's called an OWC. Yeah. The well, OWC is the, is the company that it sells it. Yeah, well, it makes yeah. it. No, it sells it. This one's got it. Sells uh, eight terabytes. It's got uh, four two terabyte uh, SSDs. Boy, you waste your money. Uh, well, that's you could have just I, you could have just thrown that onto a uh, hard drive. Yeah, I could have. You know, uh, but this this is this is better because I have sixteen terabytes here on my hard drives. And this is uh, right. it's, it's it's a RAID unit, yeah. so. Uh, you know, if a drive goes well, down. Well, that's what I have here, but I have, I have, tw I have, effectively, you will only have eight terabytes. Uh, not eight terabytes, four terabytes. You do video. I have, I haven't ever taken a video. No, but I'm saying 100,000 photographs, Phil, yeah. is a lot of space taking up. Yeah. Uh, it's four terabytes. Is it? Four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's why you got the eight, eight terabyte. Yeah. SSD. And when I outgrow this, I'll get a 16. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Hey, Phil, I don't know you. I used to be a software engineer. Yeah. And uh, just quick question. You lost a whole bunch of photo files on a computer? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. 
I've rescued two people's photo collections by booting up a crapped out computer on a Linux off of a little um, Phone drive? little stick and then grabbing the files that way. Well, so that that's uh, my trick that's worked. What I do, what I do, Phil, is I make two copies of everything I have, including that's the, the good video. Starting point. Yeah. Well, I also have two mini stack eight terabyte oh. <laughs> uh, USBs. Yeah. And they, they sit under it, so. Uh, no, I have. I have two thing. people that th I have two people that think I'm sort of like an Einstein of computing because I figured out, you know, boot it up on a different operating system and just go see if you can physically grab the files off right. of the disk. And well, uh, years ago, there was a guy that <laughs> wrote worked. a book called The Damn Book. It's called Digital Asset Management. And, okay. yeah. and so there's there's a protocol for saving your stuff. And, and that's yeah. What yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I have all my, mm. I have every show we've ever done here uh, yeah. on uh, uh, two drives. Two drives okay. here, which are, are the redundant drives. They are the drives on the, SA, on the uh, RAID. And then mm -hmm. yeah. also I keep another, all the audios here on two different drives and all the audio shows uh, on the other computer. So I've got about three copies of everything. Yeah. Well, I've got the Drobo, uh, but they went bankrupt. The and yeah. I just got a letter that they're now chapter seven. So I got to get out of it because there'll be no support. Because when you know, it's working, <laughs> oh, God. and does how much? Seven and how, in the light, does seven and tell, the light tell them how much you paid for that. It? Tell them how much you paid for the Drobo. Uh, yeah. Well, with the uh, five eight terabyte drives, uh, yeah, I remember those. about two grand. Two grand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, are they going to pay you back because they're going out of business? They're <laughs> chapter seven. You know what that means? What? See chapter six. <laughs> See chapter yeah, six. That's, that's the one where your your egg is fried at that point, right? Yeah. That's, you know, first they went eleven, and mm. now they're seven. Uh, yeah. Last week. Uh, so well, yeah, I I got to get out of it. Yeah. Well, I uh, I use a QNAP. <laughs> I use a QNAP, which is just fine. It's yeah. never it's never failed me. I mean, one some of the hard drives initially failed me. I don't know why they were maybe bad hard drives, but they weren't expensive ones either. And uh, then I put in a bunch of eights instead of the uh, fours that I had in there, and none of those eights have ever crapped out on me. And if yeah. one does, you just simply replace it with a new one, and you're still you can hot swap. Yeah, you know. yeah. Stuff yeah. is cheap and and effective now. Well, yeah, but when you go on SSDs, they're still. Uh, oh yeah, yeah you're SSDs right, you're right. are cheaper uh, cheaper than they were. These are solid state drives. Folks, yeah, they're not cheap. The, no. These four SSDs came in the unit already mounted. Uh, and it was eleven hundred dollars for the right. uh, eight terabyte. Uh, That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, I remember around two thousand. I worked at a biotech company. We had a lab. We needed four terabytes split two and two mm -hmm. with raid duplication and the quote on the thing was thirty five thousand dollars and it was like this huge box yeah 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 my my account in 1992 my accountant uh oh, bought a one terabyte drive and it was five thousand dollars and he was so proud of it <laughs> definitely well, there's our theme playing. You can't hear it because for some reason that I can't figure out, you can't hear it. If I played another one of these things, you would be able to hear it. But... Oh, you're right. You go off at midnight, Alex? You go off at midnight, and Jack Bishop is with here with the uh, intersection. You know Very why cool. he goes off at midnight? Why? Because he turns into a pumpkin. I turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, he's next uh, with the intersection, gotcha. and he, he you can call him at Skype on Skype at uh, GabNet Live. Hey, listen, okay. it's great for two new people to call this program, or people who have not called Alex, in a long lots time. Alex, love. Like I said, I remember you Well, back please then. call us more. You were, you were great, and the same goes for our friend in Thailand, Eddie Jordan, Eddie. Who, who said he did. You did call me once, didn't you? I remember that name. Well, I can't hear You're, you. You're not, You're not you're, muted, but uh, we don't hear you. Uh, we can't hear you. But anyway, hey, listen, thank you so much, Jeff. Always good to have you here. Thank you so much, Eddie. Call us again, please. Oh, I've called you several times. 
Yeah. And but it's been a couple of years at least. Yeah. Ooh. Steve, same thing. Please call us again. You don't hear me? Tony, I don't want to ever How see you doing? on this program again. Okay? <laughs> And uh, yeah. same goes for you, Phil. Never again, please. I've had it with you. you know? yeah. uh, hey, you get a couple of new newbies, and all of a sudden, it's like the old guys are uh, in the dumpster. Exactly. Everybody yeah. give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, folks. And uh, that's me for tonight. I'll be back again tomorrow night for the final show of the week. Uh, right here on uh, GabNet, uh, final show of the week. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, you know, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night.